so we bought a house. So, yeah, you know, why not? Well, that's the really the question is, why not buy a house? Uh, why not? So, Katie and I spent the last couple years saving up for a minivan. Our family's been growing. We went from no kids to three kids over the course of two years, which will happen when you have twins. So, like, we've been saving our tax return and putting aside auxiliary income things, um, saving up that money. Then, uh, about six months ago, my brother-in-law turned me onto this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. In this book, the author's talking about, the author's from Hawaii and has a really complicated name. I'll post his name in the description down below and, and you can check it out. Really good book, really good resource where he talks about rich people use their money in order to acquire assets. Assets then give you more money and those assets are used to acquire more money. So rich people use their money to make more money, whereas poor people use their money to acquire things that detract money. So I'm reading this book and I'm just eating it up. Like, ah, oh, this makes a lot of sense. Did the whole Dave Ramsey thing. Dave Ramsey says, you've got to get out of debt. So we have a very beautiful house, very wonderful house. It, it fits within our budget, totally fits within our means. But we thought like, okay, our goal is get out of debt. We won't ever refinance. Our goal is get out of debt, get out of student debt. Um, and uh and such so we're saving up for a car saving up for a minivan that we can buy in cash we don't have to finance um then i get an email from my brother-in-law who lives over in price hill and he says hey come be our neighbor sends me this email um late february i open it up i've, I've been like casually checking out the market in price hill just to see like what a, what does property look like over there it can't get much worse it's I grew up in Price Hill and um, just the values have been going down terribly. And so uh, I figure, you know, like it's pretty much hit rock bottom. It can only go up from here, right? So he sends me this link. It's an auction. And uh, I go, you know what? We've been saving up for a minivan. We've got about $9,000 in the bank, maybe ten. dollars um, So we could buy a house. Like I could put an, a bid in for... $8,000. Okay, there's a, there's a buyer's premium of 1500. So actually the bid on the house was 6500 plus 1500. $8,000 for a house. Like they're going to take that, right? Like <laughs> nobody's going to sell a house for $8,000, but if they did, it would be a good deal. So, whatever, I fill out the form, you put your name, your address, whatever, send it off and uh didn't really think much of it um, until a, like a couple days later. I was like, we're having dinner, and I, I tell Katie, so I might have bought a house. <laughs> we're eating food. Like, she should know that I did put in an offer on this house. You never know if it were to work out. So I reassure her, like, you know, it's it was for 8000 bucks, which we have in cash. Like, we could do it if we had to. It's totally cheap. You know, it's a five bedroom house in Price Hill. So she's like, oh, interesting in that sort of like, I'm not directly opposed, but wish that had been run by me kind of a, a tone. So uh, we, okay, we go on about our business. About a week later, I get an email from the company saying, guess what? Uh, your offer is being devalued. Uh, so please respond to these things and confirm that you still actually do want to bid on this. So I fill out the information, send it back to them. Um, a couple days later, they say, congratulations, your offer has been verbally confirmed. Uh, uh, what? Um, so now they need the earnest money. So I put in the bid for 8,000, but I did 4,000 in earnest money thinking like, 8,000 super cheap, but if I showed them like I was really serious, maybe maybe I could like edge out over somebody who bid 12,000. Anyhow, long story short, 
won the house. I haven't actually seen it, uh, but won the house sight unseen. So now I'm having to decide like, okay, $8,000. I'm going to assume the copper piping is all stripped out. The wiring is probably all shot. Uh, basically, probably nothing works. There's a cracked foundation needs a new roof. So, you know, like easily there's going to be twenty to $40,000 worth of rehab that needs to be done. We'll do the rehab, and, but this is still, it's an asset, right? Like this is, this is a good move. Um, so anyhow, we end up, we, we won the auction, sent the people the money, got the keys, went over and checked at the house, and it's actually in pretty decent shape. Uh, so, so now we have this, uh, this, this asset in Price Hill. Uh, rather unexpectedly, and and no minivan. Uh, so you know, like either you can buy a minivan or a house. Yeah, yeah, one or the other. So our plan is we're gonna work on this house. We're gonna do some work. Um, my mother-in-law says I have the spirit of a handyman. It's kind of like saying jack of all trades, master of none. I don't actually know how to do home rehab stuff. I've done. A little things here and there our first apartment I helped fix up um, so I have I have vision and passion with minimal expertise so uh, I'm gonna record these videos for you to show you how you could turn a house into an investment property or, or maybe you just want to fix up your own house it's it's like a low-budget fixer-upper show where you can see how you can turn a property into a, a much better property with minimal expertise, minimal funding, and a lot of sweat equity and heart. So click subscribe, stay tuned, we'll post some more videos in the coming weeks describing all the details of how you acquire a house and uh, the process of that. We'll take you through the house, show you our first experience of, of what it looks like, and uh, we'll, we'll figure this thing out. So lots of great tips coming your way. Spirit of a Handyman.